What type of reaction takes place in this cell? Well, it is a galvanic cell. So the reaction taking place is a redox. Why are we saying it is a redox? That is because there is a transfer of electrons. Let's look at 3.2. Which electrode P or Q is magnesium? Give a reason for the answer. So let's go ahead and look at our electrodes. We have electrode P and electrode Q. P is negative and Q happens to be positive. In a galvanic cell, the negative electrode is where you find your anode. On the other hand, the positive electrode is where you find your cathode. Between magnesium and lead, which one is undergoing oxidation? Which one will be our anode? We need to go to our table of reduction potentials and determine which one is a stronger reducing agent. Magnesium is a stronger reducing agent. It is going to be electrode P as it is negative and consequently the anode. So the reason we have to give here is that Mg is a stronger reducing agent. So between magnesium and the lead, magnesium is a stronger reducing agent. Let's take a look at 3.3, 3.3.1. Write down the following, the standard conditions under which this cell functions. Uh, this is a galvanic cell. We have three standard conditions. Well, one being the temperature at 25 degrees Celsius or 298 Kelvins. Another condition is the concentration at one mole per decimeter cube. Lastly, we have the pressure. But pressure doesn't apply in our case in this cell. That is because we don't have any gas. So in this cell, we're supposed to only mention temperature and concentration. That is another trick you have to be aware of. Right. 3.3.2. We are supposed to write the cell notation for this cell. As soon as the question says cell notation, salt bridge, and then I can start thinking about all the other things. We know fully well that we're going to have the anode at the left hand side and the cathode at the right hand side. The anode is magnesium, so we're going to have magnesium, magnesium 2 plus, and the cathode is lead, so we're going to have PB. Q plus and P B. And just like that, we have our cell notation. 3.3.3. Name or formula of the oxidizing agent in the cell. The oxidizing agent is the space that gains the electrons that is experiencing a reduction. Well, in our case, the oxidation half reaction, we're going to have Mg uh, giving us Mg2 plus plus two electrons this mg is our reducing agent and on the other hand the reduction of reaction we're gonna have pb2 plus plus two electrons to give us lead this lead two plus is our oxidizing agent it is the substance that is gaining electrons so this is our answer to 3.3.3 lead ions the following question 3.4 we supposed to calculate the emf of the cell above under standard conditions right the emf of the above cell will be equals to the standard reduction potential of the cathode minus the standard reduction potential of the anode at the cathode we have lead and the lead has a standard reduction potential of minus 0 0.13 minus the standard reduction potential at the anode at the anode we have magnesium uh, that is minus 2.36 if you put that in your calculator you should get 2.23 volts as the initial emf of the above cell under standard conditions the tricky equations 3.5 
how will the voltmeter reading change if the size of electrode P is increased? So increasing the size of an electrode does not affect the EMF. So the answer to you, 3.5.1, will be remains the same. Right, and now let's take a look at 3.5.2. If the initial concentration of the electrolyte in half cell B is increased. So increasing the initial concentration of the electrolyte will increase the reduction potential of that space or of that electrode. So let's take a look at our equation. Uh, the EMF of our cell is equals to the potential at the cathode minus the potential at the anode. We are increasing the concentration in half cell B. Half cell B is where we have our cathode. So the potential at the cathode is increasing. If the potential at the cathode is increasing and the potential at the anode remains the same, then the initial EMF of the cell is going to increase. So the answer here is increases. Yeah, when we increase the concentration, the reduction potential increases. And when we decrease the concentration, uh, the reduction potential decreases. But you cannot just say that EMF will increase because concentration is going to increase. You have to look at, is it the concentration or at the cathode or is it the concentration at the anode? That is also going to matter.